All right, so that's just about everybody here. If anyone comes in, we'll let them in as they arrive. But anyway, hello, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, we're just going to get started with our um, introductions for this evening. Here we go. Uh, before we introduce, I'd also like to take this moment to acknowledge the land on which we're all currently residing. Um, while we're all located in different geographic areas currently and attending this virtually, um, we're still all treaty people and we're all affected by various treaties. And so I encourage you not only to acknowledge the land on which you're currently living and working, but also to reflect on individual action that you can take to begin to rebuild relationships between us as settler and indigenous peoples. So for introductions, my name is Skylar, my pronouns are they, them. I'm a musician, singer, songwriter, and I'm the current social media coordinator for Summer Folk and the Georgian Bay Folk Society. And I'm gonna hand it over to James to introduce himself. Yep. I'm James Keelahan. I'm, uh, my pronouns are uh, he and him. And I'm a singer, songwriter, uh, also the artistic director of uh, Summer Folk and of the Stewart Park Festival uh, here in lovely Perth, Ontario, and uh, very happy to see you all here tonight. There we go. Alrighty, so just a bit of history as to um, why we're even running these workshops to begin with. Um, this past year, we received funding from the Canada Council for the Arts for a digital initiatives project. And we decided to use it to create this opportunity as a free and accessible workshop and uh, also a recorded resource for really anyone in the arts community who's looking to whether create or upgrade their, uh, their brand and their image in this uh, all digital world that we find ourselves in. Uh, James, would you like to touch on a bit of our organization and what we do? The Georgian Bay Folk Society uh, is actually a year younger than the Summer Folk uh, Music and Crafts Festival. The, the festival happened first and then a year after the festival, the first year of the festival, they created the Georgian Bay Folk Society as a nonprofit organization uh, run by a board of director, directors from the community. And that board of directors was then responsible for uh, Summer Folk and for uh, other year round, uh, other year round programs that uh, the organization decided to undertake uh, and also set the direction of the uh, of the, uh, the festival and the, and the folk society at large. Uh, membership on the board is open to all members of the community. Uh, if you uh, have an interest in being on the board or volunteering, I'm going to make our pitch that uh, we always need, you know, capable uh, uh, people to, to help us with uh, running the organization and, uh, and bringing new ideas into it. But uh, like the uh, like the um, uh, like the festival, we've been around, uh, or the Georgian Bay Folk Society has been around now for uh, almost forty-four years. And so, the Georgian Bay Folk Society is the umbrella organization that does things like applies for the grants to the Canada Council or the Ontario Arts Council or uh, Canada Heritage, and uh, they're the ones who are responsible for actually running the organization. Awesome. Thanks, James. Uh, so in addition to offering this workshop series, uh, looking ahead, we're also utilizing this uh, Canada Council funding to upgrade our current office space into a pop-up studio of sorts. So this will be a spot where people in the community can come to record, live stream, and access a number of other resources, such as even internet, in order to uh, assist with their uh, digital creations and again, the branding and such that we're hoping to talk about in this workshop series. Uh, this will be located, as I mentioned, at our Georgian Bay Folk Society office in downtown Owen Sound. So stay tuned for uh, news and updates in that. We're really excited about it. So we're gonna touch a bit on why we decided to offer these four topics of uh, upcoming workshops. Uh, for starters, social media. Uh, so this includes Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, just to name a few. And essentially, this is where people live online at this point. Um, I know that sounds like an exaggeration, but I think especially during the pandemic, it's quite literally where most people are existing and where people are connecting with other people in this time of distancing. 
Um, consistency is probably the most important aspect of this uh, form of media. It, you want people to not only recognize you, but to also be excited about the content you post. Whether you're creating content as an individual or a business or anything in between, you want to create an image that is uniquely you. The content you post is your opportunity to connect with your audience, and these stronger connections lead to higher engagement, which in turn leads to loyal viewership, uh, paying customers, as well as paid supporters, and overall just expanding reach through word of mouth. Uh, in addition, trends are on social media, and they are your opportunity to expand your audience even further. You're not limited geographically, so literally a worldwide audience is at your fingertips. So being aware of what's happening and engaging with it, your follower base will grow with you if you do all of this. I'm going to hand it over to James to talk about live streaming. And I, I also want to just uh, say a little bit about what we're doing this evening is we're going to give you an overview of what's going to be happening over the next uh, four seminars. And then uh, as we get down towards the end, we're going to see if we can, if you can help us fine tune those next four seminar, seminars. But as, as Sky mentioned, we did want to talk about why we sort of honed in on, on these. And so uh, live streaming, you know, a year, uh, a year ago, uh, I'd never been on Zoom before in my life. And I think probably the rest of you can say, almost exactly the same thing. And then all of a sudden, uh, this thing that, that none of us participated in has become, you know, uh, 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 central to our lives in, in many, uh, many ways. But in terms of the arts, it's become uh, ultra important. If you're a musician, you, you know the, uh, you know the, uh, the opportunity uh, is there now to communicate with your audience, to perform shows, to, to have uh, shows where there can be no other shows, uh, create festivals uh, and seminars. If you're, not a, uh, if you're not a musician, it's a chance, if you're an artisan, to maybe do online lessons uh, in a very intimate uh, uh, um, uh, setting. If you're an author, it's a chance to, to participate in uh, writer's workshops. Uh, and uh, to even run and lead writers workshops and help people do uh, and critique and, and all sorts of uh, amazing things that we can do uh, on this platform now. So uh, we're going to, uh, one of the things about this experience uh, for you as a, an artist who's trying to put, push out things uh, that you create is about how do you create uh, something that actually has, has a high degree of technical quality where you know the sound issues are not sound issues, where the video issues are not video issues. What do you need in terms of equipment? What do you need in terms of, of settings? How do you set up for Zoom as opposed to Facebook? All these things have, have become uh, stuff that we've all been learning on the fly uh, over the past year. And, uh, and we wanna hopefully make sure that you don't have to learn it on the fly as much as we did. I think Sky, you're taking the next. I believe websites is also you. Oh, websites is also. <laughs> uh, obviously, you know, we, we we all had websites before this this uh, this happened, um, but uh, the website is basically um, people's. Uh, although we think about social media as being uh, a place where we're sort of doing a lot of interacting with people. We actually have very little control over social media. We have very little control over the rules of Facebook or Instagram. And the one place where we're totally in control of our online lives is on our web sites. And so uh, we wanted to address how you build a, a, a website that is responsive to your audience's needs, that brings you and everything that you are to uh, people that are interested in you, but also how to uh, make your, your website friendly for e-commerce because it's now becoming a way of us uh, actually getting our product uh, to people in a, in a more immediate way than we used to. So uh, we're gonna deal with uh, websites and e-commerce. Awesome, so in addition to those topics that we just covered, we're also gonna be doing a workshop on podcasting. So for those of you who don't know, podcasts are a relatively new but an increasingly popular uh, medium for accessing um, really any kind of uh, like a talk show or a music show or honestly you name it it's probably got a podcast about it um, so it's 
again, it's grown exponentially in recent years, I think, especially since the pandemic in which you know, everybody is at home and everybody is consuming a lot more um, at home media, whether it's Netflix or podcasts. Um, at this point, you could really ask anyone what podcasts they listen to right up there with what kind of movies they enjoy or what kind of music they enjoy listening to. Uh, what sets podcasting apart from these other kinds of media, though, is that it's even more accessible, both from the creating and from the consuming side of it. Uh, so it's very easy to learn how to produce and record and distribute your own podcasts with the right resources. Really, all you need is a microphone and just an idea or a topic that you're passionate about and want to talk about. Uh, and on the audience and consumer side of it, it's again, extremely accessible and generally is free to subscribe to and to follow. So this means an even greater potential for you as an artist or a creator to reach an even bigger audience. Basically what all four of these workshops have in common in the uh, this pandemic times is that everything's been shifted online kind of and cranked that to 10, right? So now it's more important than ever to make your mark in these digital worlds. We're going to go through briefly the uh, sort of outline of the upcoming workshops. And again, we really want to tailor these to what you folks want. Um, so there will be lots of opportunity to ask questions afterwards. So as we go through this introduction, start thinking about uh, specific or even super vague questions that you want to ask these people that we're bringing in. Hey, summer folks. Kelly Samuel here, formerly from Olivia and the Creepy Crawlies. I am a social media expert and a founder of Stack Toronto. I am extremely excited and thrilled to be doing a branding session with Summer Folk on social media and marketing on March 8th at 7.30 p.m. I hope you tune in and I can't wait to meet you. So as Kelly mentioned, she is an expert in what she does and we're really excited to have her come in to uh, get you a really good start in developing your social media branding. If you want to follow more of what she does or get a sense of the kind of work she's involved with, check out her social media at the uh, links listed at the bottom of this slide. Uh, next up, we'll be having Graham Lindsay here to do a live streaming workshop. Um, we have a video from him as well discussing some of the things he hopes to cover. Hi there, my name is Graham Lindsay and I've been doing video streaming since 1998. I'm really excited to bring some of that knowledge to you on March 15th for a digital literacy seminar and uh, basically teach a whole lot of people how to take their video and get it out to the world. Uh, we'll be taking, uh, we'll be talking rather about software. So getting your video into the software, whether it's OBS or Zoom or things like StreamYard and getting that out to the digital media platforms. So Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and so on. And once you get that, uh, once you understand that the, the process, everything else will open up for you. So if you've got questions about finite things, very, you know, very technical hands on things, I can answer that. If you've got questions about conceptual things, I can answer that as well. But we need to know what questions you want to ask. So if you've got any right now, please let our team know and they'd love to collate the questions for you so we can be more organized on the day. And I'll see you on March 15th. I'm really looking forward to talking with you. Thanks so much. And then for the third workshop, James, do you want to talk a little bit about uh, Megan's approach to what she's going to talk about? Yeah, uh, Megan works for uh, her own company, which is called Rosero Biz, uh, and uh, they're in the business of building uh, websites and online presences for people. Uh, I should mention that, uh, you know, Graham, who we saw earlier, uh, was the person who did our live stream of the, of the festival on Sunday night. Uh, Megan is the person who is presently redesigning our website for summer folks. So we've got hands-on experience with these people and know, know their expertise. So uh, she's, she's an expert in website design and, in, and especially uh, integrating website design with uh, your, uh, your image, your brand, and helping to bring e-commerce tools uh, into the mainstream of your, uh, your website. So uh, she's a driven fascinating uh, person and uh, we're really pleased with what she's doing with our website which we hope to be able to launch maybe next week in, t in time for the first uh, for the first uh, uh, seminar so uh, I can certainly speak to the fact that she's thorough <laughs> awesome thanks James and then last but not least we're actually bringing in two presenters for the last workshop uh, John Farmer, many of you might recognize as uh, one of our uh, wonderful MCs at Summer Folk Festival. 
Uh, he's the founding host of George and Beirut's radio, the official radio show of Summer Folk. And we're also bringing in uh, Sam Barr, who you may also recognize from the band The Lifers. Uh, Sam is the host of a radio show and podcast called Lyrically Speaking, which is a show that highlights the music and writing processes of emerging songwriters. Uh, really excited to have these two sort of co-produce this upcoming workshop. And it's going to be a very informative and fun time. So now we want to open it up to all of you because uh, we really want to tailor these workshops to, again, what you want to know and what you want to get out of it. So feel free to type questions in the chat. And I'm just going to close this screen up here. There we go. We're also, if you all are comfortable with it, we'll go through uh, the Zoom rooms that we've got here and uh, just do like a brief introduction of ourselves and kind of maybe one or two things that you hope to get out of the series. Yeah, I just check in the chat as well. I can check. The, I can check the chat if you would like to. Uh, if you would like to run through the live portion. The live, yes, for sure. Alrighty, so I guess Zoom screens are a different arrangement for all of us. So it's going to feel random who we call on. Um, I'm just going to go based on the order on my screen. Uh, so we're going to start with. Uh, so Jarrett. Hello, folks. <clears throat> My name is Jarrett. I am uh, also the uh, operations manager for Georgia Bay Folk Society, uh, but I'm also a uh, musician who has spent uh, uh, almost exactly now 30 years um, making a living playing music live and have never really had to pay attention to my online self. And the last year has kind of changed that. So here I am <laughs> trying to figure out this stuff too. Any, uh, uh, any, any particular questions? Sorry, James, I think no, I cut off there. <laughs> well, I guess my, my most uh, frustrating thing is trying to figure out where my time is spent most effectively. Um, is it spent on, you know, creating uh, uh, a, a wide social media net, or is it better spent to focus on one of the uh, platforms? Because, like you know, I've, I've I've got friends that focus on a single platform and they do well, and then I've got other friends that just sort of cast a wide net, and that seems to work for them too. So I, I don't know which one is a better choice. I feel like that's going to be a very good one to ask um, Kelly in the social media and branding workshop. It's kind of the, uh, that, that's her scope there. <laughs> uh, next up, let's uh, check in with uh, David. Oh, hi. Um, so I've done Facebook Lives and Street Jelly. And uh, lately I've, uh, I've been on TikTok a lot and I I know that once you get a thousand followers on TikTok, you can go live there. Um, so with the Facebook lives and so on, I, I, I kind of just like ideas on, on how to get more listeners um, because I only seem to get, uh, you know, about a dozen at most. And um, so any ideas for increasing the, you know, the audience would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> uh, Marion, Marion Little. We'll see if you're, I think you're muted there, but there we go. Hello. All the way Hi from there. Peterborough. All, all the way from Peterborough. Yeah. No go Jiwanong. Um, so I'm Marion, what were the questions? Can you repeat them? I'm oh, sorry. that's okay. Yeah, just uh, no, just introduce yourself. Uh, anything you want to share about like your 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 kind of work, your background, things like that, and what you're hoping to get out of these workshops, and if you okay. have any particular questions. Thanks. So um, I grew up in Owen Sound. Um, you might know my folks, Noreen and Peter Little. Some of you have been involved in summer folk for a long time. We've been in and around the festival for lots of years. I think I started attending when I was two. And 
and uh, met my sweetheart there. We've been together for 28 years now. I guess it'll be 30 years since we kind of met at Summer Folk, so that's fun. Um, I work in, um, uh, basically I run workshops around conflict resolution and communication skills and um, uh, resilience informed practices and things like that. And I'm a visual artist and um, I'm interested in uh, learning about, yeah, how to be um, more more engaging and more interactive. And I think that that would be something I would have for all four um, speakers is uh, there's a huge loss in terms of the heart to heart connection that happens when performers or speakers are, you know, in a circle or on a stage. And um, yeah, so I, I'm really grieving that and, and would love ways to fill the virtual space with with more heart connection. Um, in terms of sort of technical questions, I'm interested in uh, maybe from Kelly, what she sees the role of, uh, of blogs. Is that mm -hmm. passe? Is it still something to do? Uh, similar to one of the earlier questions, like if you could only put your energy in a couple of social media platforms, like which would they be? Um, and, and how long and how frequent do those posts need to be? Um, I'm also curious about privacy and security and how do we mm -hmm. make sure that we're protecting our audiences and um, thinking about that. I have a question about how to mind the limits of rural internet. So for performers and um, presenters and also for viewers who are coming in from rural settings, how do we balance minding that with being able to see each other's faces when video takes up so much bandwidth. And then the last one would be, um, how do we improve the quality of the, the presentation on with limited resources or limited um, machinery? So what are some really simple things people can do to increase the quality and the professionalism and the friendliness of what's happening with the tools that most of us have at our disposal? Awesome. These are really great questions. Thanks so much for sharing those. I'm like writing down a whole bunch of notes and it's going to be some uh, really good stuff, I think, that these uh, presenters are going to discuss. Uh, next up on my screen, uh, Kaylee and Mike and Ginger and Jeffrey, according to your Zoom name. I love that. We're all here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Kaylee. This is Mike. That's Ginger. This is Jeffrey. And uh, I'm I'm an aspiring musician. I'm, I'm, I don't have any particular questions. I'm just interested in everything. I'm, I'm particularly interested in the podcasting one to see if there's ways that I can improve um, what I produce for Georgian Bay Roots and uh, the webcasting. Very interested in that, but, but everything. I just, I kind of, I don't have a prepared question. I'm sorry. I just plan to kind of be a sponge and take all of it in. I feel like I'm kind of on the periphery of, of this world and I'd like to get into it a bit more. Awesome. I hope you get a bunch of things out of it. <laughs> I'm very excited. Thanks for putting this on. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming. We were very excited when uh, all of you showed up this evening. It's exciting when we've got a such a diverse group of people. Uh, next up, uh, Beth. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm just down the road from James, actually, not too far from Perth. And uh, I appreciated Marion's uh, comment about uh, how to improve uh, the experience for rural viewers um, of our offerings, because I'm one of those. And I'm actually amazed that I can actually hear all of you tonight. And I even ventured to turn on my camera, but that normally doesn't work. So I think that's a really important uh, uh, topic. I come at this from three points of view, partly as a viewer and uh, appreciator and lover of music, but I also uh, run an organ, a group in Ottawa that's a, a community of people who were interested in their particular type of music, the uh, Cape Breton session. So it's a, a loose group of musicians 
who play the music as well as the community who likes hearing the music. And I found it a challenge during the pandemic to take what was a hugely successful real community and turn that still into an online community that still is connected. Um, I've also been thrown you know, unexpectedly into another aspect of things. And that's because of my work with the other music groups. Uh, uh, my church has decided I must be the expert in how to live stream services and put the virtual choirs together and, and keep that kind of uh, uh, aspect of music going. And in that regard, I'm really looking forward to the workshops on live streaming. And one of my biggest questions is how to integrate all these different platforms. Now we've got Facebook groups and Twitter, and I know we should be able to get everything that is posted on the Twitter feed to automatically appear Facebook page, but I haven't actually successfully done that yet. At the same time, if we're live streaming things, is it best to live stream them on Facebook when, especially for my church stuff, not, not all the older church members um, can access Facebook, but they have no problem with the website. Now, so right now we have services that we're posting on a website and on Facebook. And we just need to get a better way of putting all those things together. So that, that's what I'm really hoping is how to get better quality live streaming and just how to so that it can reach a bigger audience. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, Graham will really be able to help you with that. And I, I'm not gonna give anything away here, but uh, <clears throat> when we did our live stream, <clears throat> sorry for summer folk, we were running due to Graham's wizardry. We were running simultaneously on Facebook, YouTube, and on our webpage. But uh, but he's the wizard, yeah. and as and far as I know, he just like banged a staff and <laughs> poured out of it and. Yeah. And, and, and I know Graham personally, he's a, actually a close friend of mine, and I've just been afraid to ask him because to me that's just, that's technical expertise that I should be paying for. <laughs> and I already get him to do so much other stuff for me. So I really appreciate having access to him in the form of these workshops where cool. it's a little more about professional communication. Right on. And I don't feel like I'm just bugging him and picking up his time. Cool. Great. Perfect. <laughs> Glad to be of service. <laughs> All righty. Next up, uh, Ryan. Ryan, you're unmuted, but I cannot hear you. Alrighty, uh, we're going to come back to Ryan. <laughs> yeah, Next up Ryan, on my Ryan screen. That's in the chat that he'll fix it. <clears throat> that's, what we're, that's what we're here for, Ryan. Did I fix it? I think I fixed it. Oh, yeah, it. you did. Oh, perfect. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, my name's Ryan. My background is mostly uh, live sound engineering, studio recording, producing, mixing, stuff like that. Uh, I also played in bands around Ontario for a few years through high school and a little bit through college. And when I first started in the music industry, I found myself not knowing what literally anything is. And I actually want to kind of create a brand or a YouTube page, website, stuff like that, to bring the knowledge that I've learned and make it easily accessible for people to access, people starting out in the industry and stuff like that. Great. Sweet. Thank you so much for sharing that and for coming. Also, it's good to see you. It's been a while. Yeah, you too. <laughs> uh, next up on my screen, uh, I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Is it Leith? Yeah, it is. It's Leith. Okay. Um, so I'm here very much. I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting there to be like group participation. Um, so I didn't brush my hair and I'm not going to turn my camera on. Um, <laughs> I'm here very much as an interested learner. I'm um, I'm a long time like I'm a lifelong summer folk attendee, um, but not 
someone who's performing in public other than with choirs at this time. Um, but I just like knowing what's going on behind the scenes. And one of the things about this pandemic that's been really interesting for me is that now I live in Sault Ste. Marie, which is far away from everywhere in the world, um, it feels like, especially in the winter. And um, having everything moved online has actually made a lot of stuff more accessible for me. And that has been fantastic. So while I'm getting kind of tired of just being in my house all of the time, <laughs> I feel like I've actually had access to more and I hope that a lot of this continues. Um, but in terms of what I'm, I don't have any specific questions in terms of what I'm hoping to get out of this is maybe some tips for some of the virtual choir stuff that I'm starting to tiptoe into. But um, other than that, I just like knowing what's going on behind the scenes and sort of feeling like I'm still paying attention to what's going on. Thank you very awesome. much for doing that. Awesome, thank you so much. And then last on the screen here, uh, we got two people. So Mary and Rico. There we go. Yeah. Hi all. Um, so one of the one of the problems that I've got is that I was just starting to establish a performance career when COVID hit, and now I'm scrambling to try to adapt electronically and online. And the problem is, is that I'm a, I'm a noob when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I'm watching um, other people in an equivalent position um, take advantage of, of all these electronic opportunities. And I'm not 100% sure how to go about it, where even to begin. Um, and so I'm really coming in this at ground zero. And um, optimally, I want to, because the, the, the art that I perform is a little bit different. It's not, it's not music necessarily, it's, it's performance poetry. So it has a little bit more to do with theater. Uh, and I was going into a, a more theatrical approach when, when COVID derailed everything. Um, so now I've got to retreat back into books. And I see there's around, around the world, there's virtual poetry readings, there's virtual poetry workshops, there's all this crazy stuff. And I want to be able to maximize my ability to do these things, to actually get started um, and maybe even earn a little bit of scratch doing it. Uh, because, you know, a lot of these things, there's, uh, there's sign up fees and stuff like that. And um, so there's a way to commercialize this that I'd also like to get in on. Um, and uh, just so just find appropriate platforms. Uh, and so Ultimately, it's a little bit of everything. I think just about every one of these workshops is going to have a lot of stuff in it uh, that'll be of, of interest to me. So there you go. Fantastic. And uh, did Mary uh, also on your screen have anything to say or was it just uh, you signed in with two names? Yeah, I signed in with two names. Okay. She's here. Hi, Marion. <laughs> <laughs> Marion's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Family reunions, I love it. Uh, just gonna circle back, uh, Kimmer, we haven't heard from you yet. Hey everybody. Um, I, sorry, I had to jump out because I had to, uh, somebody came to the door. So um, I'm not actually sure what the question was. Just introductions, uh, um, what you're hoping to get out of the workshop and if you have any specific questions you wanna ask basically. Awesome. So my name is Kimmer T. I am a coordinator with Youth Discoveries for actually for Summer Folk as well. Um, I also work in economic development, tourism, and culture um, in our area here. Um, and so what I'm hoping to get out of this uh, these workshops is that um, first of all, some tips and tricks for my youth that we that come through, so we can give them more information as they come through and and. Um, um, and help to foster their music careers in, in any way we can in the in the new scope of everything, as well as just having a connection with, um, you know, where people in general are at, or whether it's their business, um, like a business, whether it's culture, <clears throat> whatever the case is, so that we can see and figure out ways that we can start to um, help promote and help and help uh, um, help to advance people um, in whatever their their capacities are and their careers choices are um, through these electronic means and, and through digital workshops. So anyway, so I'm excited to be here. Thanks for hosting. Fantastic. So that 
covers all the uh, introductions. Uh, thank you so much for sharing all of these questions and backgrounds of where you're all coming from. I really like this uh, this group, and I think there's going to be a lot of really good discussion in these workshops. Uh, James, do you have anything additional to add? At this point? No, I just uh, I think uh, I think you've all got great questions, and and uh, I think you're all honing in on what you want to know, and uh, you you will find uh, the people who are running these workshops are very, very resourceful and very open to asking your questions and or a answering your questions. Um, and I'm just uh, very glad that you've uh, stepped into the into our uh, little uh, digital tune up room here and uh, looking forward to seeing you over the next four weeks. Right on. So, uh... I don't think I put up the slide of our contact info, so I'm just going to briefly do that. But uh, that just about covers all we hope to cover this evening. So if you have any other questions, you can feel free to stick around. Uh, you can also contact us at our emails listed there, as well as on social media. Uh, and again, thank you all so much for coming tonight. I'm really excited to get started on these workshops with you. <laughs>